What internet marketing expert should you spend your valuable time listening to? Listen to someone who has over 20 years of web marketing experience and hundreds of website marketing success stories. That man is Aaron Sparks from Site Strategics. And this is Edge of the Web Radio. I'd like to introduce Tom Webster to the listeners of Edge of the Web Radio. Tom Webster is the Vice President of Strategy for Edison Research, a custom market research company best known as the sole providers of exit polling data during the U.S. elections for all major news networks. He also he has nearly 20 years of experience researching customer, uh, consumer usage of technology, new media, and social networking, and is principal author of a number of widely studied uh, cited studies, including The Social Habit, Twitter Users in America, and the co-author of The Infinite Dial, America's longest-running research series on digital media consumption. Thank you so much for joining us today, Tom. Well, thanks a lot for having me, and uh, you'll have to get rid of that other Tom. Would, the plan, the plans are in the works. They, they've yeah. been trying, and I <laughs> keep coming back. <laughs> Tom, I mean, Tom, you, 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 good time. You got the, you got the good phone too. So I mean, it's already starting to stack against him here yeah, in the studio. That's true. <laughs> Well, Tom, Tom has a great quote on his on Brand Savant, too, that says, you cannot feed the hungry on statistics. So I, I absolutely love that. Ain't that the truth? And Tom, Tom we, I actually saw you speak uh, out in San Diego, and it was a, it was a fantastic um, it was a fantastic speech where you basically um, slammed all of the or many of the infographic developers that were out in the audience and uh, some that weren't in the audience, too. Hmm. Um, and and I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean in a good way. You really, you know, showed, you know, how people um, were lazy. not doing a disservice and, and were a bit lazy, you know, in the fact that they were representing data and, and you know, that they should be held accountable to a higher degree. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because a lot of our audience, you know, they base decisions yep. on a lot of these statistics coming down the pipeline. Yeah, you know, I, you know first of all, I like infographics and uh you know i don't know that i i slammed them but i there were some practices let's call them worst practices that there you I go might have called into question uh I, anything that makes complex data more comprehensible or more understandable mm -hmm. for a lay audience i'm i'm all for right? i mean that's that's my job I, I do that every day if i can find a way to make something complex simple that's great uh i mean the problem i have with a lot of infographics are you know number one they mix apples and oranges and unrepresentative bananas and, and a few kumquats uh, without, you know, giving you any kind of source or way to calibrate the various kinds of data that are on an infographic. I mean, if you see an infographic that mushes together things from four or five different studies, uh, you might be tempted to think that each graphic is referring to the same sample or mm -hmm. the same group of people, and often they're not. And, you know, you can tell a very misleading story that way. But... You know, the biggest issue that I have with a lot of the data that we see being shared on the social web, and it's, you know, let's face it, we're, we live in an era of, of content marketing, right? Of people marketing their service, marketing their business by the content that they put on the web. And things like studies and infographics, they make compelling content. And so when you produce these sorts of research studies for the purposes of content marketing, your obligation is a little bit different than my obligation. You know, your obligation is to get clicks, uh, to get people to read it, to get right. people to share it, uh, and not necessarily to give them information that's going to specifically help their business. There's no altruism there. I mean, there's literally the, 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 the goal of, of revenue generation. In one way, shape, or form, they are, they, they, this is bait to be able to bring more more eyeballs on that website and ultimately have a higher conversion rate. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's not, infographics are, are often the uh, the milkshake that brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the milkshake sucks sometimes. Uh, you know, the, again, the, the great thing about infographics, though, I think if you look at them this way, look yep. at them as if, they are giving you great questions to ask about your own business. There you go. And not they're giving me the answers to my own business because nobody has that data for your own business except you. Absolutely. And if you get an infographic that says, you know, this is the best time to send an email or this is, you know, what this audience likes, that, what that should give you is not an answer, but that should raise a question in your mind. I wonder what my customers would do. I wonder if my customers are interested in that. And then test those things. Ooh. You know, be curious. Don't just accept them as uh, as kind of gospel. 
That's great advice. I, you know, you talked about email. The one that always gets me, always gets me, is every email provider talks about their percentage of inbox. You mm-hmm. know, that, that I get 99% <clears throat> inbox. And there's always this fine print at the bottom of the screen or wherever that basically says, yeah, after you've been on our platform for you know three months then you'll get 99 percent. you know so in other words after all the bad email addresses have been blocked and you know removed and everything else then well no duh (laughs) you know uh yeah tom what is your impression of research and data analysis inside of social media now now the infographics and the in the data you were talking about that can certainly be circumspect but at the same time has the industry matured inside of social media to a degree of reliable insight i think it's getting better uh you know certainly the tools that we have and i i say we here as in as in the royal we mm-hmm. uh but i use them i mean the tools that we have to make sense out of all the data that we get in social are much much better than they ever used to be you know, oh yeah there i now have the ability to actually make sense of what i see now what you get on the social web is not necessarily representative of consumers or americans or even your customers but it also ain't nothing right know? i mean you, when you're getting all of this data if you can find a way to put it into the context of your business, uh, and it's great for qualitative research, by the way, and I'm happy to explain that, um, then, uh, you know, the, it's, it's, it's getting much better, and, and you're getting more rigor applied to it, and you're, you're getting more people in, in my field mm-hmm. uh, applying their insights to it, you know, but it's, it's definitely it's come a long way, and I think, you know, as the majority of Americans now have a profile on a social network, uh, it's becoming much, much more of a, of a mainstream sort of, you know, I don't know about predictor, but a mainstream indicator of how majority Americans act. We can at least put the the, the, the uh, yardstick in the river, and we can actually get a, a bit of a, a, a good understanding of what the flow patterns are. Let alone, not so much the the, the the intuitive nature, because it is very subjective to what, your vantage point. But at least you, you've got you've got the ability to, to to understand the waters a bit more. Oh, ab- yeah, absolutely. And I think you know most of the the data that I see kind of shared on, on you know, Mashable, TechCrunch, some of the other sites that you're talking about, mm-hmm. the studies that they cite are fine. The problem is always in the headlines. Mm-hmm. Always in the headlines. And the headlines, again, because they are designed not to help you, but to make you click on anything, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, often overstate or misreport what the study actually says. And so most of the, most of the data, uh, fundamentally, there's no great problem with it. Usually it does what it says on the tin. You know, someone says, hey, I, I looked at a thousand tweets. Fine, just say that. I've got a thousand tweets. I know what to do with that. But if that then gets reprinted as Americans are doing this more than ever, uh, that's that's a problem. You know, if anybody listening is on Facebook and Twitter and wants to follow Tom, mm-hmm. uh, Tom's tweet is uh, or Twitter address is Webby two thousand one. So W E BBY two thousand one, and then you can find him easy just by looking him up on Facebook. Sure. The reason why you want to follow Tom is because everybody who's who in the industry always throws them these softballs where they go, hey, Tom, what do you think of this research? <laughs> and Tom is a colorful, colorful commentator <laughs> when it comes to people's research. Uh, it's, it's, he's, he's, he's very, you know, uh, you, you kind of cross both lines between entertainer and statistician. Uh, thank you for saying that. I mean, I've, I've been... <laughs> presenting, I mean, most of my days was, was with client work, so I've, I've been presenting numbers for 20 years, and if you do not find a way, <laughs> you will kill people. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you found a way. <laughs> I can appreciate that. I truly, uh, we, we've always liked to educate, but you know what? There were times where we were making eyes and ears bleed with geek talk and we finally I think we finally found a medium to be able to relay that with a with a with a point of entertainment you're listening to edge of the web radio with aaron sparks we're online with exclusive podcasts the latest web news and links at edge of the web radio.com